Hi, and welcome to the Marketing for Writing Coaches show. In this program, I sit down with the best marketing experts who share their secrets so that you, the writing coach, can focus on what is really important, building up a marketing strategy without the overwhelm. Today, my guest will teach you how to set up a tactical LinkedIn strategy while publishing only one post a week. Yes, I said that right. That is not a mistake. We are going to talk about how you can be successful on LinkedIn with only one post a week. My name is Anne and I help writing coaches get more clients. My guest today is a LinkedIn trainer who works with professionals who want to position their brand narratives on LinkedIn. She helps them to connect organically with ideal clients, attract the best talent, and stand out as a leader in their industry. Get ready to be blown away by Rachel Simon, the CEO and founder of Connect the Dots Digitally. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Yes. Good morning to you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very early morning for us. <laughs> exactly. Um, thank you so much for coming on this show. Um, I think so many of my writing coaches will be excited to, to hear that we can really be successful on LinkedIn with only one post um, a week. So, but let's go start with the basics. So you talk a lot about LinkedIn, how it's an important marketing tool as a business owner, but is this the same for writing coaches? Why should they become active on LinkedIn and not on any other social media? That's a really good question. And, you know, I think today, more and more people are interested in writing books, right? More and more professionals. And whether you're looking to find a publisher or you're self-publishing, there's a level of credibility that um, goes along with saying author, you know, Amazon bestseller. And there's a lot, you know, I know there's uh, ways of making that happen. So I the the reason I bring that up is that there is a plethora of professionals on LinkedIn who aspire to be an author but the idea of writing a book is very overwhelming i know it's something i can't tell you how many people have brought that up to me oh you should write a book do you have a book and the idea of writing a book is terrifying overwhelming um oh i know so <laughs> there is this you know huge audience for writing coaches on linkedin for people who just really need their help and know that they have a book in them and need somebody to help them get it out. Yes, yes, that's actually a really good point because many, I mean, that is what writing coaches do, right? Uh, myself, I tried to write a book. It's still in my drawer. It's still not out there. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, writing coaches, LinkedIn uh, can really be the place to be, especially like you say, when, when you're talking about a uh, business owner, but also just uh, writers of fiction and books. I mean, they, they don't even know where to start, I think, most cases uh, to find the writing coach. So Yeah, it's it's funny you brought that up. One of my former clients, she was actually one of my favorite profiles that I have ever worked on, uh, is, a, is a romance writer. And we had so much fun writing her headline. Oh, that is very great. It was very spicy. Um, I would love uh, you. I will put the link to this profile in the show link. So I would love you to share this with us oh, because sure. that can obviously be uh, be great help as well for the writing coaches to give them some inspiration on how they can yeah, go it's a around good, that. It's just a good reminder that it's not just uh, nonfiction, that there are fiction writers yeah, on exactly. LinkedIn as well. Great. Thank you so much. But let's dig in into what I think we all think is very interesting because we hear so many influencers tell us, oh, if you want to be successful on LinkedIn or whatever social media that we're talking about, you need to publish every day. But you say, no, nope, not needed. You can be successful and build up a tactical LinkedIn strategy with only one post a week. So how does work? Where do we start? Sure. So really you have to start at the beginning, right? And the beginning is a, a profile that really makes it crystal clear who you are, what you do, why you do it, who you do it for. Mm -hmm. um, making sure when you get that dialed in, then you set yourself up for success where, with all of your other strategies, network building, content creation, engagement, all those various things. The reason why I, I really like to coach my uh, clients on you know, a posting cadence that is once a week is 
exactly what you're talking about. It's so overwhelming. And so there are a lot of people who, if they were told either post every day or don't bother, they they wouldn't be there, right? They it's mm -mm. it's too much. It's like forget it. I'm never going to be able to do that. So I'm yeah, not even going to start because it's not just publishing the post. It is all the work that goes behind it. So yes, correct. So you know my philosophy is con consistency and quality over quantity. So dialing in that consistency, and I think it's much more effective if you can get a great post up once a week for one, two, three months, and then you feel more confident, and then maybe you turn that into two times a week. And then maybe you're like, this is so much fun. I'm gonna post, I'm gonna make sure I at least get two a week, and, and then maybe if I'm inspired, I'm gonna throw in a third or a fourth. So you, some people may work their way up to five to seven posts a week, but I, I personally do not believe it's required to mm. have a really effective content strategy. I also think that was kind of old advice. Yep. Uh, and it was advice that I was I heard about three years ago because at the time the LinkedIn algorithm was different. And yep. so content really didn't have a long lifespan. But today the algorithm is, and again, this could change tomorrow. So don't, you know, don't quote me on this. The algorithm is always changing. I was um, going to say, <laughs> but the current state that we're in, sometimes a post can have a week span, um, a lifespan of like three, four, five, seven days. So if your post is still gaining traction, if you uh, post too soon after your first one, the one that's doing really well, it actually can cannibalize that sometimes. So the lifespan oh, okay. of content is is longer. And so I don't believe it's required to be seen for visibility purposes to post every single day. Now, five years ago, that might have been the case. Okay. So actually you 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 mentioned something very important here is that a post on LinkedIn has a longer lifespan than it has, for example, on Instagram and Facebook, because there we know that the lifespan is very, very short. Like if your post does get traction right away, it can get um very quickly swiped away so with linkedin it's a little bit different if i understand well yeah i mean it still has to get some engagement you yeah, know yeah. at the beginning but i've seen posts it's so interesting sometimes if you you know take a peek when you're scrolling your news feed and i i promise you'll see some content that is like a week old mm. even even you know, two three weeks old yeah two three okay. weeks old yeah so LinkedIn does kind of continue to push content out based on the audience, the algorithm and whatnot, if it's still getting engagement. Okay. So if you get a really good post out there and you just never know what's gonna hit with your network, um, you know, it can, it can live for a while, but even if it has a lifespan of three days, that's a good amount of the work week, right? If you post a yes, post yes, on Tuesday exactly. and it's still kind of cook in on Thursday. Good job. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, um, you know, on the weekends, most of us don't work. So if you can avoid to have to publish on the weekends and keep a track on it, uh, it's always a good thing. So uh, one post a week, what is going on behind? Because you have a great model and I will uh, put a picture on this in the email and on uh, on the LinkedIn about the pyramid. So you call that the sure. pyramid. So yeah, so I, you know, it's important, I think, to have a framework when you think about a LinkedIn strategy, because very often, you know, people will be like, I, re I really need to do something with LinkedIn. I'm going to start posting. But like I said earlier, if your profile isn't dialed in, that content might, it might get some traction. But when people come back to look at your profile and the profile is, isn't clear like what you do or mm. doesn't necessarily make sense with what the content of the post is that it's unfortunate right it's we don't want to make an error like that we want we want our profile to represent who we are to our yep. network and be giving them content that really resonates with them so i look at it like a pyramid right so if you picture a pyramid and you're going to include that in the um yep. the graphic the base of that pyramid is your profile. That's the foundation. I also use the analogy of it's like the foundation of your house, right? Mm -hmm. You want, you wouldn't buy a home with a weak foundation or if your home had 
a crack in the foundation, you're going to fix it because it's yeah, exactly. the livelihood of your house depends on the foundation. So the livelihood of your LinkedIn strategy, your pyramid is built on that foundation, that profile. And, and what are on the, the, oh, go the, ahead. Key, the, the key elements of that foundation? So you talked to me about like, who we are, um, yeah. obviously not an empty profile, but what are like the, the main criteria that we should have on uh, on our LinkedIn sure. profile? Um, so there's a lot of pieces that go into a profile. So it can also be very overwhelming. But if you can Let, dial let's keep in, it simple. <laughs> right, we're gonna keep it simple. There's five there's five key components that you that are must haves, in my opinion. Your um, vis visuals. You need to have a really good profile photo that looks like you currently. So if your picture I is currently, so the one that we had 50 years ago, <laughs> nope, today, no. currently. Because it's really, really awkward when you meet somebody in person and they don't look anything like their LinkedIn picture. Yeah, exactly. Does that ever happen to you? Because it certainly has happened to me. And I'm like, uh, like. no, really, I must say, like, I okay, always good. make sure that I have current. <laughs> No, no, because not I'm you. I'm saying like sure. if you've met somebody, because I've met oh, people yes. out in the real oh, world. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's 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 awkward, right? Especially so you when want... it's like for an interview or something like that, then you're like, oh. that's not what you look like on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, so a current professional photo. Lucky for us, we live in the digital age. So most iPhones, you can take a really nice picture. There's tools you can do to remove a background. So get a good picture and leverage the visual that goes behind your photo, the banner image. So that should be thought of like a billboard. Yeah. It's a place to advertise why you're great, what you are, who you do, who you are, what's your industry. So um, when it's blank, when it's that gray, sad, empty space, it's like, a, uh, I don't know, uh, where you live, but here in, you know, in the States, when there's an, a billboard on the side of the road that's empty, it says your ad here. So that's oh, what, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. right. So that's what that gray banner says your ad here. So especially if right, if you're a writing coach and you have your own business, get your visual brand in that banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's not a complicated thing to do as well. You can just take Correct. Uh, your tagline and your logo and that's it. Exactly. So, and then it's just important to keep in mind that the bottom, um, the bottom two thirds on the left should be blank because then your profile photo sits over that. So you don't want anything important, any text or anything in that section. The second most important um, piece is your headline. And your headline should be more than just your title and company. So if I used CEO and founder at Connected Odds Digital as my headline, would you have any idea what I, I was going to say? I have no idea. No, <laughs> right. No, but I wouldn't have any idea either. Right. So we crafting a headline that speaks to the problem that you solve, the value that you bring, you can put your company name and your title in there, but put that towards the end of your headline, you know, lead with mm -hmm. the value proposition, um, you know, helping, um, you know, emerging authors find that book inside yes, of them, exactly. something like that. Yeah. Um, Perfect example. So making sure your headline's really dialed in, use the first 50, 40 to 50 characters, because that's what's visible when you're active on LinkedIn. And I like to add a little personality pers into headlines, you know, because people like uh, to find a point of connection. So as an example, you know, I'm a big Taylor Swift fan as are so many people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I have that in my headline. Um, and all these people now, because she's touring uh, in the US, are like tagging me in posts about her. And I love it. Uh, Ooh, but you find that, those points of connection. One. Yeah, yeah okay, that's a people. great one. I didn't even think about it. So you get, you know, you get visibility where you didn't expect it. Right. So it's super fun. Um, so the third most important component of your profile is your about section. This should be written in the first person. And it is not a place to just kind of copy and paste the top of your resume you want to these are writing you're writing coaches write a story tell us about you know who you are how did you get into this industry you know obviously 
the key to great writing is start with a hook that's going to get people to read mm -hmm. more. So really enjoy taking the time to write an about section that is it's taking your headline and expanding on it. Uh, and for uh, entrepreneurs or business owners, the way I like to structure it is thinking about what is the problem you solve? Why are you uniquely equipped to solve it? How do you solve it? And then what's your call to action? What should we do? Should we message you, DM you, email you, something along those lines? So problem, expertise, and how you do it, and then CTA. That's kind of a good general structure for your about section. And you can have, again, a little fun in there as well. You don't need to tell the whole story of your entire career. Um, but you only have 2,000 characters anyway. Yeah, it's 2,000. Right. 2,000 yeah, words. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so then the next piece, the number four, is your experience section, making sure that, you know, this is where it can structure more like a resume. Uh, I like to focus on accomplishments from past roles. So what did you accomplish in your previous positions versus what were your responsibilities? Because sometimes you'll see experience section, it's just like all these bullets of, responsible for but what did you actually do yeah what did you actually do right what were your what were you proud of what uh, what did you accomplish in your role um if you own your own business i highly encourage you to create a company page for your company even if you are a business of one again because it will pull the visual brand of your company into your profile you don't need to be active on a company page but Build the company page completely. I was going, yeah, that was going to be pretty, my question. Do we need to have the active both on the LinkedIn profile and on the company page? No, no, not right now. Maybe down the road, but like at the minimum, you want your logo to populate into your profile. And the only way to make yeah. that happen is to have a company page. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, make sure that the description of what you do is consistent from your website, your company page, and your um experience section and then the fifth piece is your skills so the skills section has uh changed a lot recently uh there's a lot of new updates there so with as far as skills you can list up to 50 skills you want the three that you want associated with you the most to be number one two and three because that's what's visible um, and now you can connect your skills into your about section you can add five skills into the bottom of your about section you can connect your skills into your experience section. So it's if you haven't looked at your skills in a while, do it <laughs> because yeah, it's like a red light for me as well. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, something I have seen many, many, many times is, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago, we were learning all this digital stuff, and so it made sense to put that we were skilled in using Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel and Outlook and things like that. But today, those are kind of irrelevant because it's assumed that we're gonna know how to use those tools. Yes. A lot of people, and I've, I've had clients and I'm like, you gotta get that out of there. You know, they have those still listed in their profile because they never took a peek at their skills um, and remove those sort of outdated skills. Or, you know, the other scenario that happens a lot is somebody started in this industry and then they shifted to this industry uh, but their yeah. skills reflect this industry they never updated the skills that need to, that will help them get visibility in their current industry so take take an inventory of your skills get rid of the irrelevant ones beef it up with the current ones and then use um connect in and i can also send you i made a little video of how to do that so i can send you my, the link to that video oh absolutely we will add it in the show notes as well. So Lots that's, of not, so, that's not super overwhelming, right? Your pictures, yeah. your headline, your about, your experience, your skills. If you have those five components, your profile is, is in better shape than many profiles on LinkedIn. And then you can supplement. You can add in volunteer roles. You can add in um, a featured section. And that's a nice thing, especially for your audience. You could feature some of your you know, your client's books that they've written in your featured section. Yes. There's only more, I like to add that as like, those are like the sprinkles on the ice cream sundae, right? Yes, exactly. But once you have those five elements in place, um, then we already have the foundation and the foundation of our pyramid is good. So we have Correct. profile, 
what is the next? next the next is, number? do you know who's in your network? Aha, uh -huh. okay. So um, a lot of people say, hmm, not sure. Uh, so you can download your current LinkedIn network. You can actually pull all of your data from LinkedIn mm -hmm. um, in the settings section. And one file is your network, your connections. You get it as a CSV spreadsheet. You get first name, last name. There is a field for email address, but it's mostly blank. So just delete that field. Um, company position date connected. It's a really good tool. It's a good exercise to go through, download your connections, sort it, however makes sense. So usually sort by company and then position. And just take a look at who's in there. Because generally, one of two things you'll see. One, there'll be people that you completely forgot about because you connected with them 10 years ago and they were at this company and now they're a business owner and could be a potential customer. Um, or it's just fun to reconnect with people because you just never know who can open a door for you. I was gonna say, yeah, it, it's, it can always be fun. You know, you go to your list and like, oh my God, like 20 years ago we connected. Oh my God, that does make us younger. But 20 years <laughs> we connected, but uh, I haven't been in contact with you. Let, let's, yeah. So. Yeah, so um, so that's one thing you'll see, or mm -hmm. people will um, realize that they're missing, you know, big chunks of uh, people they should be connected to. So let's say, you know, your targets are these titles in a specific industry, and you take a look and you realize that, uh, or a certain specific company that no, but you're not really connected to people at that company, right? So it means it's time to start building more strategically and making sure your network is reflected of who you want it to be who versus who's currently in there. And um, and, and why is that important with our content? Um, I so um, yeah, I, I've used this analogy in the past. Um, you know, you could have a packed room, let's say you're a financial mm -hmm. advisor and you are doing a presentation on uh, retirement strategies and your, the room is packed, but it's packed full of you know 21 year olds, not 35 or 40 year olds. Like it's one thing to have a lot of people, but if they're the wrong people, what's the point, right? They're not, yes. they're, the message is not going to resonate. So you wanna make sure your network is comprised of the people that care about what you do and are going to want to engage with you and learn more about you and your services and your skills. Um, and if they're not in your network, you need to, you need you to need build to. them into your network. Yeah, because that comes back to what you told us about uh, that an article can have a lifespan of LinkedIn of a couple of days, but to have that lifespan, there has to be the, the engagement. And if you don't Correct. have the engagement because the people you are targeting are not in your network, it doesn't even, you know, it, it's not going to work. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So it's all like goes together. We want to make sure that we have the right audience. So it's really mm -hmm. that a question of, are you speaking to the right audience? And is that audience reflected in your network? Yeah. And and also, I think it may be useful to say that here, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't, you don't need to have 10,000, for example, Romans oh, writers, no. if you're Romans mm -hmm. writing coach, what you need is to have those couple of people who are really engaged with your post and who can get your post up there and help with the lifespan. Yeah, and and you you know there are, are a lot of people on LinkedIn that they're just all about the vanity metrics, right? How many? How big is their network? How many people? You know how many how many views their or impressions their posts get? But it's more important, in my opinion, that it's the right people. I could have twenty thousand people in my network, but I don't accept every connection request I get because I want the right people in my network. I'd rather have, again, just like I was talking about earlier with content, quality versus quantity. To me, my philosophy and everyone's philosophy is different when it comes to building their network, and that's totally fine. Like I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer, but my personal philosophy is I'd rather have a, a quality network where I know people, they know me, and they care about what I have to say versus a giant network that is like, who? Yes, exactly. And then you see the post and I'm like, when did we even connect? I don't even know. Yeah. And there are definitely people like that in my network, but I try to make it uh, 
you know, I'm a little picky about who, who I accept. I want to know where they came across me. That's really mm -hmm. my big question for people. So like for your, um, for your community, you know, I'm happy to connect with everybody. I just want, I, all they need to say is saw you on and show. Yeah. That's it. Yes, exactly. Because then you know that there's a connection and that there's been, um, something that, you know, that's the reason for that person. Um, Correct. And that's a good strategy for when you are reaching out is just drop a quick little note in the message to say where you came across them. I saw your post uh, about, you know, X, Y, Z, or I saw you on and show, or um, I was listening to a podcast that brought up your book. Like, just give me a point of reference as to why are you reaching out to me? Where did you come across mm -hmm. me? Because otherwise, it's a lot of work on the receiver to have to try to figure it out. Yes, exactly. But I'm the same like you. If I can't figure it out where you come from or like what's the reason that I'm not going to connect. Like sometimes I will ask the question and if it's just like, oh, I want to follow you. I know that that is not going to make. Yeah. That's not exactly. going to make a cut. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes I've asked that too. And, you know, if I don't get a response that I'm like, okay <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah because linkedin actually does limit the number of connections you have as well so um, they do i mean it's a lot like uh you can have thirty thousand connections which is quite a number of people but uh you know i what i really find to be amazing is you know there's a lot of my connections that i've i've met in the real world and will you know are making plans to meet people like mm. this summer so you know you can build real relationships with people through the platform yeah exactly exactly that's one of the, the, the reasons i really love linkedin as well you can build you can still build those real relationships yeah absolutely um so yeah so your network sits on top of your profile and then really is the content piece which like we were talking about at the yeah. start you know getting that one really good piece of content out per week thinking about at the beginning and a good way to do it is I know sometimes the idea of like once a week feels like a lot but for some reason um when I've talked to my clients I'm like can you come up with four things to talk about they're like oh sure I can talk about this and this and this and this and then and so and then you have one month <laughs> right what are four things you can talk about and in any one month, there's probably something happening, whether it's like a holiday or it is some, you know, day of, you know, I don't know. There's all kinds of in May, Coffee maybe, day, little, tea day, right? Flower whatever, day, whatever's happening in your country where you're living, you know, in May. Um, you know, we just had Mother's Day here. Uh, there's a lot of graduations in May. From like high school and college so you know maybe you want to talk about something along the lines of you know graduate what things i never thought of or I, ne I never expected you know after graduating or you can come up with use those Ooh, to help nice you come one. up with ideas yeah um but plan it make a plan come up with four things and then hold yourself accountable to actually get those posted so the the plan is based on four things. So that's like a, a monthly plan then. Yep. Yeah, that's I, you know, that seems that seems easy to do, right? It's it should I what I really want people to kind of be able to see is that it again, it's very when you break it down into the tactical components, it shouldn't be overwhelming. Now I know that there's a whole you know, mindset piece that goes into this too of imposter syndrome and what if no one likes my content and, you know, all those things. What if my post flops? It will. Everybody's post. Yes, post. I must say the one of, <laughs> if, if you want to have an example of one that flops, go on my profile last week. So no worries. I'll, we all have that post one of moments or another. Right, exactly. You're, you, you are going to feel like an imposter. Your post will flop, um, but you will slowly start to build momentum it takes time so making a plan and then setting that expectation with yourself i'm going to do this and i'm going to be kind to myself um and be patient because any all good things in life require time yes and investment. I, I really love that you you insist on that one rachel because yes we also hear too much of like you publish five times a week and that's it you know after two weeks you are up on the top and it it doesn't work like this it takes time 
I do not, I find that always to be very frustrating when I see posts like that. Like I posted every day for a month and now I have, you know, 10,000 followers. I mean, no, no, I don't, I don't personally buy it. Maybe some people, there are a few people that did take off like wildfire. It does happen sometimes, but they're few and far between. I was going to say, yeah, that's probably the exceptions. So I agree. Um, Rachel, anything else to add regarding your pure beat? Um, I would just add in when it comes to content, the other piece that is important to uh, plan into your week is commenting on other people's posts. So that ah, goes, yeah. that's how you supplement your one post a week. That's how you kind of stay top of mind by engaging with other people's content because you will show up in the newsfeed. So identify people you should be commenting on and make a plan to, you know, comment on three to five posts a couple times a week. A good comment, not like, this is great. great. Or Thumbs up. Thank you. Highly. Yeah. <laughs> but something meaningful, you know, mm -hmm. again, you can figure out who are the people that you should be commenting on. Um, and, and, and that's again linked with that second um, part of your pyramid, right? Um, really with, with the content network. piece, yeah. like content and engagement okay. um, are like good partners because sometimes you can even come up with a post idea from a really juicy comment that you drop. Yes, yes. And I find it also interesting to go see what other people write because it gives me an idea as well. Okay, what is working? What is not working? Uh, that exactly kind of that. And then, you know, you can, you can show your personality in the comments a little bit more. They're a little more casual. You can, I've connected with lots of people simply by, uh, through a really good comment thread. So, you know, it really does support all of your other strategies. And then really the pinnacle of that pyramid is whatever your specific goals are. So that might be oh. visibility, brand awareness, you know, developing thought leadership and obviously um, new business, right? We all want new mm. business development. So whatever your goal slash goals are sit at the top of that pyramid. Because that is what going to all influence your entire strategy. Correct. And really you want to almost think about starting at the top, right? To circle back to the bottom, the top. Yeah. Is I was going to say, it's like, yeah. Why am I doing this? Like, what is, yeah. what is your reason for participating? Mm -hmm. What are you looking to do? Rachel, I still would have liked to ask you tons of questions, but we do need to wrap up. So one last question, if there is one thing a writing could do to improve their presence on LinkedIn right now, what would it be? just show up time to start you know don't no excuses because you're missing the opportunity to really in, to be seen right yeah. um this is something i've i talked about on a, a podcast recently is it's very hard to quantify the value of being seen mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people on linkedin that don't show up right they only read um Lots of writing coaches out there. So please people get, get active yes. now. So writing coaches, you could be a trendsetter and become, you know, the writing coach that all the other writing coaches aspire to on LinkedIn. Right. I love that. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has, I always like to say, you know, there's a million LinkedIn trainers. I, I probably know, most of them <laughs> on LinkedIn, but we all, we all talk about LinkedIn in our own unique way. We all work with our clients differently. We all have different areas of expertise and focus. So in your industry, in your world with writing coaches, same thing. Everyone has their own unique perspective and their own yeah. unique skills. So just bring yours to the table and show up. Yes, exactly. And and if you're scared that your first post is going to flop, uh, you can absolutely tag me or Rachel. We will be more than happy to give you a valuable content and help you get that first post, got the lifespan um, of a couple of days on LinkedIn. Exactly. And people are very kind on LinkedIn. I mean, as long as you're not, you know, being overly salesy, uh, there's a very supportive community on LinkedIn. Yes. Especially for the first post, I, I always see that um, people will support you. Uh, I've never had like very aggressive or, or disrespectful comments on there. So agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. 
So thank you so much, Rachel. There's actually a second thing that writing coaches could do, and that's go on your website because you have an amazing lead magnet, which is the LinkedIn leverage scorecard. So you've watched this video and you absolutely want to get into it, but you don't know where to start. Go to her uh, website and you can follow, uh, fill in a little quiz. And then the quiz will tell you where are the gaps in your LinkedIn profile. So that's already a big step to start. Am I right? When I say yes, it's like yeah. this. It's a fun little uh, assessment. It, it's going to ask you questions about all the things we talked about. So your profile, your network, your content, your engagement. Um, and it probably takes like, I don't know, four or five minutes and uh, you should do it. It's fun. Yeah, I was going to say, like because then, then you know, then you actually really know where to start. So exactly. Um, and if someone wants to go further on you, we can also find you where? Uh, on LinkedIn, obviously. So you can find me, um, like I said earlier, please reach out, connect, just tell me that you found me on the show. Um, and I, you know, love helping people to really embrace the value of LinkedIn because it's an amazing place to show up and be seen and make great relationships. It is, it is. So and um, uh, that's a wrap. I hope that you really learned today how you can set up a tactical LinkedIn strategy while publishing one post a week. As a reminder, Rachel Simon talked to us about her pyramid, which starts with the profile, then who is in your network, content and engagement, and the top, what is your goal? If you want the next episode, write in your email box. Don't forget to subscribe to the weekly newsletter for writing coaches. You will find the link below in the comments. Rachel, thank you again so much for joining us, and I wish you a happy day. Thanks so much.